Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 65th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. And to start off, I'm going to talk about the video that Pod2G released early this morning. So he released a video demonstrating an iOS 5 untethered jailbreak on the iPod Touch third generation. And he did this by showing that it was first jailbroken and then by rebooting it, which does prove that it is an untethered jailbreak. Also, he said once the jailbreak is complete for all pre-A5 based devices, then he will start to work on getting it compatible with the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2. And on top of that, he also confirmed that it will work for iOS 5.0.1. So essentially, we will have an untethered jailbreak for iOS 5 and 5.0.1 and it will be released sometime in the near future. Again, it does look like everything is working properly with it, so it shouldn't be too long before an untethered solution is available. Just be sure to check back on my website daily for more information related to the untethered jailbreak. Also last night, MuscleNerd tweeted out that they will be releasing a new version of Red Snow. Now this new version of Red Snow will most likely just be a minor update, so don't expect anything major like iPhone 4S or iPad 2 support or even an untethered jailbreak. He simply said that it will will make use of Tiny Umbrella and Cydia blobs, also known as SHSH files. So hopefully that means that the new release of Red Snow will be able to downgrade from higher iOS 5 firmwares. So basically it's something that's just more for the future. Also Perceptive Pixel demonstrated their 82 inch and 27 inch touch displays and they're absolutely amazing and they could definitely pave the way for the future of technology if things continue to go the way they're going with the whole touch screen trend. So I definitely recommend checking out their video. I'll have a link to it down below in the more info. And kind of building on that in the future of technology, Samsung released a concept video of a flexible AMOLED display. It's certainly amazing, however, it doesn't look quite realistic due to the fact that they were able to do things that require significant hardware components, such as take pictures with the display, and I couldn't see a camera anywhere on the display. So that basically leads me to believe that they're just demonstrating the capabilities of the display rather than demonstrating an actual device. And again, I'll also have a link to that down down below so you can check out that video. And moving on, a really nice infographic was put together that shows the evolution of the iPhone from the original iPhone in 2007 all the way up to the current iPhone 4S. And it shows a couple of interesting things such as new features from one device to the next, as well as how many people actually ordered the device on the opening week and some other interesting and noteworthy things. So make sure you guys check that out if you're interested in the iPhone. Also on the 7th, Microsoft's official Xbox Live app was approved by Apple and it's now available in the App Store for download and it basically lets you keep in touch with your friends on the go with your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. Also for those of you that are familiar with OnLive, a cloud game streaming service, they're actually starting to offer their games to mobile devices. They have an app that's already available for Android and one that should be available for iPhone iOS relatively soon that will allow users to play full console games on their mobile device. And basically it does this by actually streaming the game to the device. So obviously a constant internet connection is required and there are only a handful of games that have been ported to use touchscreen controls. However, if you buy OnLive's $50 wireless controller, then you can play practically any of their 200 plus game titles on your mobile device. Also, Google released a new application to iOS and Android-based devices that's called Google Currents, and it's basically a new way to deliver information to readers. I guess you can kind of compare it to Flipboard and Pulse. I have a video of it on the post, and you can check that out in the more info. Also, with 2011 coming to a close in just less than a month, Apple released the App Store Rewind of 2011, and it kind of summarizes which applications made a big impact on their apps store and it's kind of obvious some of the applications that are up in the top 10 but it's really nice to see a wide variety of applications and that's what we were seeing this year. So just make sure you guys check out that list if you're interested. And that's it for this episode. Also remember if you want a chance to enter to win a brand new iPhone 4S, be sure to simply rate this video up, favorite it, and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the phrase FNC ICU iPhone. If you're unaware of my iPhone 4S giveaway that I'm doing in collaboration with Friday Night Cranks, I will have a link to a post on my website down below 
in the more info that describes the giveaway and how you can actually enter. Also, I will have links to everything else I talked about in today's episode down below. Just be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release a new video. And if you want to be updated more often, just be sure to follow my Twitter accounts and like my Facebook fan page. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.